is it guys i think i found my favorite movie of the year hey guys what is up it's me anthony here to give you guys another movie review this time it is for love and monsters love and monsters tells the story of joel a kid living in a post-apocalyptic world where bugs and sometimes reptiles are bigger than they supposed to be the one thing on Joel's mind is to get back his girlfriend who he hasn't seen in seven years. He decides to go on a journey that will take him seven days just so he can reunite with her. This is it. This is the movie I've been waiting for. I've been watching really, really bad stuff and some good stuff. Not, not a lot, but this movie, I think it is. I think it, I think it is guys. My favorite movie of the year so far. I feel like it's been a long time since we had an adventure movie, a fun movie like this. Remember in the 80s, some of you probably don't remember, but some of you from the 90s, you remember watching some 80s movies and there was just like a whole bunch of adventure and joy in those kind of movies. And Love and Monsters as one of them. I know the title's kind of weird. You see Love and Monsters and the trailers, let me tell you, the trailers don't do this movie justice at all. Because it's not just about this kid trying to go see his girlfriend in apocalyptic world. That's in here, but there's so much more to it. So let me stop beating around the bush and let's finally get into what I liked and didn't like about this movie. Starting off with the positive takes I got with this film, the first thing that really got my attention was this story is simple. It's about a kid who just wants to go see his girlfriend during the end of the world pretty much. That story we've seen a whole bunch of times, but the way that this film and the director and the writer and everybody involved takes this and elevates a simple story like this into something that I consider one of my favorite movies of the year, if not the best movie of the year, I think is pretty incredible because like I said, this, this movie, we've seen this kind of premise before. We've seen something like this, but everything around it to the characters that our main character interacts with to the monsters that are here, monster designs. I'll get into all that stuff. It's just everything surrounding this simple premise is amazing. So let me talk about the characters because the main character that we have in here, he's not your typical main character. He's kind of a wimp. He doesn't, he's not really good at anything, but the one thing that he is good at is having determination to see his girlfriend, right? And that's not really a good <laughs> attribute to have in these kind of times. And you would think that he would just probably be one of the worst characters ever. He's like a bumbly idiot. He doesn't know how to do anything. He gets people in trouble, but it's not like that. The way that they dive deep into his backstory and they have flashbacks in this movie and they use it to tell what happened to him before the apocalypse happened. And I thought they did it in a good way, but I think the characters that stood up the most for me were characters that weren't really even, they're not even human at all. Actually, there's a dog in here that the main character befriends named Boy. Oh my God, everybody after watching this film will see this dog and they're like, I need it. I need this dog now. Where's the plushies for this dog? Because I need it. Also, there's robots in this film called Mavises. They were kind of like AI, the first ever AI before the bugs start smashing on <laughs> things and everything. And they didn't really get a chance to get out into the world. So there's barely any working Mavises. But Joel stumbles across one and, and the interactions that Joel has with the Mavis robot is probably one of the, my favorite scenes in the movie. But going back to Boy the Dog, I mean, Sometimes they use CGI on a dog and I'll get into the CGI and how I feel about it later on But there for the most part this dog is just doing some tricks like a trainer is telling it to what to do and the kind of emotion and this like talking points it feels like the dog is talking when it's not even it's not even doing anything just the little lifts of its eyebrows or just the tilt of its head conveyed so much more emotion and I understood what was going on in the dog's mind just by those little movements. And I thought that was really, really cool. But let's talk about the effects and the CGI in here. There was surprisingly a lot of practical effects in this film. I was kind of taken aback because like I said, the trailer does this movie does not do this movie justice at all. Showed a whole bunch of CGI monsters and stuff. And the CGI monsters didn't look that bad, but you're just like, oh, it's a whole bunch of CGI. No, there's some practical effects in here with the monsters and other things in here. And th there's just like really good set pieces. There's like stuff that harken back into the, like the early 80s and 90s when they were using like practical effects for everything, right? And I appreciate that. I always say that the more practical effects there is in a movie, especially with a movie that has giant monsters or anything like this or horror films like that, I think is a benefit. I also love the design of these monsters that they have in here. You can kind of tell that if, if 
a radioactive mist came down from space, which is what happened here. <laughs> if it came down and it transformed all these common animals into these things, this would be the result. They're not too outlandish. They don't look like monster hunter freaking dragons and dinosaurs or anything like that. They just look like, eh, that's what a mutated slug would look like. And getting back to Joel, I just like his whole character development in here. He goes on a journey. The guy starts from being sucky and not knowing how to shoot anything or defend himself to beating pretty good. He's not Rambo or anything at the end of the movie, but he knows how to defend himself. So he knows how to survive. And the best thing that he knows how to do is draw and record things. And that's what he does. He pretty much is making a volume of the world, the topside world, and all the monsters that live in it, its weaknesses and its strengths. And I thought that was really cool and interesting because not everybody is a superhero, right? Not everybody's gonna jump out and be like, I know how to do everything. I'm like a badass and kill everything. There's also just a lot of callbacks from other films. There's like Tremors in here. There's a scene, I don't wanna spoil it, but there's like a scene that literally is Tremors in here. There's like a callback to Lord of the Rings with the ring wraiths in here. There's so much different ones. I gotta watch it again. I'm sure I found some, and I'm sure I can find a whole bunch of other callbacks to different movies. But there's just so much good stuff in this film that I think I can talk about this movie for like an hour. Don't wanna do that to you guys, so I'm gonna hold it back a little bit and let's just talk about the little negatives that I have with this film. So the two major issues that I have with this, well, I wouldn't say major issues i would say small small issues that i have with the film are the villain and the ending a little bit so let me get to the villain because or villains or whatever there's, there's a group of people there <laughs> they they're not really bad guys they're kind of, i kind of feel like they're just thrown in there to like hey um we filmed this movie it's uh we need to, we need to put a bad guy in here that's that's what it felt like they just were thrown in there they didn't really have any substance i personally thought that you can just be without them i don't think they really even needed to be in the movie i don't think they brought anything to the movie any they didn't add anything new and the ending of the film is just filled with a whole bunch of coincidences like characters will be in certain places at the right time when looking at this world you were like they're, they're so lucky that that happened and I just it, it took me out of the movie a little bit because the rest of the film is so strong and then you just have those like random moments of like oh I'm here t at this right time and everything's okay and it worked out perfectly it was just kind of weird but yeah guys I think this film is probably the best film no it is the best film of 2020 so far at least that I have seen. I just like it guys. I love it so much. I'm going to add this to my collection. I know what you, I know what you guys are saying. You're like, Anthony, it just came out. You don't even know. I, I know, trust me. I know these things. But guys, let me know what you think of Love and Monsters in the comments down below. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Are you excited that there's actually movies like this now? Adventure movies, you know, movies that you can watch with your family and not worrying about if there's a, like a weird love making scene <laughs> you know i know some of you watch game of thrones with your family eh? we all remember those awkward moments but guys also check out my twitter so you can stay up to date with my channel and as always guys keep watching movies